Hi everyone and welcome to OP Digital Blueprint. I have my uh, buddy here, Red Redfern. Say hi, Red. Hello, everybody. Hello, Red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Collins uh, uh, should be here. I think he's on his way, but um, uh, we'll, I'm sure he will join us in the meantime. Um, there's lots to discuss today. Um, I wanted to cover a few, few points and I know Red does, so I shall pass the floor across to Red to start with. Away you go, my friend. Thank you very much. Good to be here as always, Andy. Uh, I do like the Tuesday night seven o'clockers. It fits in nicely with what I do. So uh, good to be here as always. Uh, obviously, the last few I've been away doing other family stuff, etc. But uh, nice to be behind the wheel of uh, Digital Blueprints once again. So uh, we're going to talk about a few things, but uh, I want to get started with basically what's been happening uh over the last two three days etc uh let's start off with today then um we had a message through marty and myself today from ash mufara wanting to hear from you guys um to be honest it's pretty unprecedented isn't it really in any business when you have the ceo reaching out to uh the early adopters and the users of a company saying what do you guys reckon you know in your opinion what would you like to see and the question was what are the first three as in three products that you would like to see uh released as far as on passive is concerned and why uh would you like them to be released in that order uh i think it's an absolutely great thing to do to gauge what uh, the users, the customers are looking for out of on passive. And obviously, with your help, uh, then we can gauge really where the company feels uh, the efforts should be um, put into for those products to be released in what order. And uh, for me, obviously, I wrote quite a big list and reasons behind it, which I sent to Ash and all of the emails that have been sent to me have been forwarded through uh, to a designated uh, email that's been set up. And if you want to know more details, details about it, just go on to my YouTube channel on today's live and all the details are in there where you need to send them. But um, to go back to having a ceo who wants to know our opinion really is not the norm is it you know talk about a business that is changing that doesn't do things normally uh, this is just another example of that to have a ceo wanting to know what our feelings opinions are as far as the products and services so if you want to add to that you can do you can send it through to me and I, obviously i will forward it through uh, over the weekend then, we again uh, had a lot of interaction with not only our CEO Ash Mufara on OTech Pros, who did a fantastic job. He uh, talked to us, I suppose, from a different angle as far as what is happening and occurring right now. He, he just came to it as a, a, from a different direction to try and clarify what exactly is going on. But for me, um, the best information um, came from our COO, which was Mohammed Kamal. He, uh, we saw him twice over the weekend, one for a very short interview uh, with a founder in um, Dubai, which was fantastic. He brought us up to date with a few things there. But more importantly, he had a discussion with the Indian founders uh, about certain things and they asked some very good questions and he answered them as honestly as he possibly could um there was some that obviously he's not allowed to answer for various reasons which is absolutely fine um but really is uh, a great way of doing that uh, jelly snack is this a way of capturing emails for an email list no it's not you you don't it's you don't have to send it in at all it's just to give us an opinion uh of what products in what order uh, that they want it to have it in. Uh, if you think it is for caption emails, don't send it in. Pretty simple, really. Um, 
so yeah, he one of the interesting parts of what uh, Mohammed Kamal brought out uh, over the weekend was really how much we knew or we think we know about the business. He said, "You guys probably only know one and a half or two percent of what is actually going on, and there's that means there's ninety eight percent behind the scenes that we have got absolutely no idea about whatsoever." Uh, that excites me really because. That little 2% that I know or think I know, uh, I'm pretty happy with that part. And if there's a load more on top of that, then that really does get me excited. Another thing that he brought out again, which I felt was very informative and made a lot of sense, and that was about the migration. Now, obviously, no time or dates had been getting, given on the migration. And we can only guess, surmise of how long this is going to take. Obviously, sooner the better, uh, really, for everybody involved. But it is a process that does take time. If you do a little Google research about how long uh, migrations take uh, of this size, uh, it makes good reading. I'm not going to uh, tell you what they are on here now, but you can go onto Google and put those details in and you can uh, find out yourself. But one of the interesting parts of what Mohammed Kamal did bring out was uh, him saying about the main reason behind this migration is for back end changes. OK, now. Back end, front end, what end are we talking about here and what does it all mean? in layman's terms the back end services is really the behind the scenes working of a product uh, it is the nuts and bolts the coding and everything that ties everything together now the on passive ecosystem alone just that part is a very complex uh web page with so many things interconnecting and to migrate all that has to take well it does take a long time because everything has to then basically it's a bit like having a huge great big uh lego piece that looks like a dinosaur and somebody comes along and smashes it all to smithereens and you've got to move it and put it together as a dinosaur again okay it takes a lot of time to put all the pieces back into the right places and add any enhancements to make it look a different color dinosaur or you know or whatever i whatever i'm trying to explain here is that these enhancements are being done in the migration for the future of the ecosystem now part of what i'm guessing for that is to accommodate an awful lot of user flowing through users flowing through the ecosystem now we already know because we've been told that around about 3 million users have an account within the ecosystem. Obviously, some are founders, some are affiliates, and some are straight users. Now, that's really without trying hard and doing a lot, isn't it, really? 3 million people uh, within one area without actually starting and doing much about it. So. The reality is when we do start and when we do get going, that's going to be 10 million in a nanosecond. It's going to be 20 million very quickly. It's probably going to be 40 million within a year or less. Now, to accommodate those users, you have to do upgrades. You have to change that back end to accommodate everybody within that system. Obviously, from the front end, user looking at the screen itself and all the tabs and bright lights etc then it's a completely different thing yes that is going to be upgraded but not to the extent of the back-end service of our ecosystem now the ecosystem don't forget is just one area we know how many products are in there right at this moment we when it went offline uh, for the migration, we had O Connect was part of that, O Mail, O Trim. Uh, uh, we had the ecosystem itself, plus extensions of O Founders and lots of other things. 
we know how many other products are in the pipeline already of on passive at top of the ecosystem it was showing 17 we know there's going to be more of that all of those products have to be intertwined into our ecosystem again part of the migration to make sure there is room and capacity not only to bring more uh, products and services into the ecosystem but also to accommodate for the size of the users that are going to be logging in on a daily basis all of these sort of things is a necessity to be done now before we open the doors why could you imagine if all this went on when there was 10 million users 5 million users they wouldn't be too happy would they really but we can control what's going on right now get it done now so that when we open the doors there is no stopping us Another interesting thing of what Mohammed Kamal said as well over the weekend was along those lines. He understood that when we start again, there cannot be any blips. There cannot be any pause. There cannot be any stop. Now, part of when we see it again is going to be the integration of the payment processor. Yes, it's going to be tested, but it will be there right at the beginning. And we need to make sure that when we get going and it, the doors are open to the public, that that payment processor that we have there is capable of facilitating the needs of on passive and its users. That in basic terms mean money coming in and money coming out. So really does make a lot of sense in my in my book of what uh, our um coo was saying uh over the weekend to give us all these updates uh apparently somebody in the chat called wes wants me to hand it over to collins so i'm going to do that right now over to you collins who said that right you, you still going on <laughs> i know i was a little bit late <laughs> I was a little bit late because I was trying to. I I I was on, but when I look at the time, it's like I don't know what happened. Switch off. I said, "Oh, this it's already started. Let me just jump in." So, yeah, Red. I hope you've already done, Red. Are you done? No, we want you to I'm finish. Done for now. I'll come. In, I'll come yeah, back. For in now, he is, Colin. Don't you worry. <laughs> He's yeah. always got something to say. You know that, Collins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I was listening to Red. Red is really right when it comes to migration. You know, migration is not like an easy thing. It's just like a click of a button and then you say, wow, everything is there. We're talking about big data. It's like you're moving house. Like last time I explained, I said, we are moving house. You're moving from one house to the next house. You know, and when you are moving, the first thing you have to examine the house. You know, you come in with all your kitchen stuff. You need to look at the size of the kitchen. Where you have to put this, you put your knives, your spoon, your this, your that. So that's how it is. You look at your, your living room. Can my living room accommodate all what I'm bringing in? Can my kitchen accommodate all what I'm bringing in? Can my room, you know, everything, your garage, your stuff. That's how you look at it. It's not like, like a lot of people have been coming out asking about this migration thing. Why is it like this? I say, no, it is not just easy the way you think. You must, again, look at everything, the infrastructure of the next place you are going. When you go to a new house, you want to make sure that house can accommodate where you are coming from, you know, where you are moving into. You need to make sure. And sometimes when you I say, no, this will not fit. Maybe the kitchen is not enough for me. Maybe my living room is not enough for me. I have a very big TV screen. The wall is too tiny. How can I fit this in? You need to make all those decisions. But we know they've already made that decision. But now you are moving and making sure everything fit is exactly how you want it to be so that there will be no instance where things will fall apart. The moment you migrate into something that is not right, what will happen? All your data will corrode. It's just like you have, they will just corrupt, your data will be corrupted. And when you click on it, nothing. So all of this back end stuff where Red is talking is very important because back end is more difficult than even front end. You know, the front end always speak to the back end. Like when you have something, you log in, you front end is about use, user interface ux user interface we interact humans interact with user interface 
but the back end stuff is where the interpretation of what you are doing take place all the mechanics all those things that are happening take place when you go and you say okay i want to log in you enter your username and your password yeah. the only thing as a, as a user you want to see the system return you something because you already have in mind if i log in i want to see the login page i want to see maybe my my oes but you don't know what is happening yours is just to put that information and the system you know is the one to go in find that information make sure all right collins manner is trying to log in let me check if collins manner is registered in the database that is the data we are talking about and if collins manner is not existing it will come back and say no record cannot be found you are not there just imagine they hurriedly do what we are thinking they misplaced some of the data and i've tried to log in they said oh you cannot be found and i call red red oh can you log in i say yes i'm able to log in but what what is happening with me i cannot log in it's because they rush things and they misplace some of the data the system cannot recognize where my data is and it cannot log in it will bring a lot of problem so what this they are doing is make sure they try to do it you know it's a complex situation a, a, a process but they are trying to make sure everything works systematically and they want to put it in the right place like a house you build the room is there and fit everything accordingly so if people start to go in they can get that information the information they want to get like red said it is really massive and we're talking not only about data migration but we're talking about other enhancement you know back end enhancement is a lot to make sure the system is robust when you log in there is speed there is fastness there's everything because you don't want to move to a new house and then for instance andy want to log in the system is just you know just buffering just like oh my god it's like you're sleeping they need to make sure this the speed load and everything all where we are going they're moving the data to it can handle that environment we're talking about connectivity you know there's a lot of things what if they are using fiber optic and you're going somewhere they're using copper copper cable i know a lot of people will not know this because it's about not only the data but it's about uh, we're talking about you know um, uh, um hardware as well you know they said no we are using these particular facilities but then we need to accommodate our data to start to recognize this facility we are using because what you are using was different but we have this they need to test all of that make sure it is compatible so when we go in everything is as if there was nothing so it is a lot of work but we know they are getting there because before they make this move they already know it is possible it's something that they've investigated they've done it behind mm -hmm. they know it is it is durable but the only thing we need to exercise as founders and affiliate and those who are coming is patient because as like Ray said they don't want to go do something and then all of a sudden the system shut down again ash doesn't want that and they want the system to be up there and even more better than what we are thinking and that's why he's, he's saying what we will see will be 100 times better than what we have seen so i will leave it there andy that's my only little thing i want to add to thank, what ray said <laughs> thank, thanks collins uh, i I'm with you guys. I don't know the technical side of this move, but what I do know is it's for our benefit and for obviously the company have to get it right. As you quite rightly pointed out, guys, the fact is that when we go to market, we have to get it right this time. We have to make sure the, the payments uh, uh, can be made both on the, on the way in and on the way out. We have to make sure that the products are perfect for everybody to be able to use and we have to be able to, to ensure that there is this not we don't have this buffering system and situation because it's going to annoy customers and that's not what we're here for we're here to be able to provide and on passive is going to be able to provide value for money and far superior products so once this thing is is ready and rearing off away it goes now i wanted to cover up um something else and this is to do with security because i cannot wait for onet to come up trumps and be revamped as as they've been saying um some of you may know uh, my 
Facebook account for on passive has been hacked. It's been switched across to somebody else and and uh, they have a different email, a different password. So I can't get into it. I can't add to it. I don't know who my contacts are, none of that. But um, the annoyance is that the security aspects um, uh, aren't good enough with Facebook. That's one. Secondly, there is no one, absolutely no one to talk to. You can't get through to somebody to speak to. It's an impossibility. You can email and you might wait three months to get a reply if you're lucky. What a waste of space. So not only have we got this system or situation at the moment with idiots pr pretending to be others, which is obviously what's happened in this case. Now they've taken over my account. They're pretending to be me. Great. Away you go, pal. Really not bothered about that. Uh, at the end of the day, as soon as we can move over to ONET, you've got to verify who you are. And that's one of my three red. I want O verify in because that's going to knock out the idiots. And I'm sorry, but there's going to be millions of idiots trying to get in. And you can't unless you prove who you are. Yeah, we don't want you idiots. If you're not willing to put your face in front of the camera, don't even go there. Um, so um, ONET is one of my my priorities and i think when we've got the clubs we've got the podcasts we've got the the blogs you know this is a a social media platform with a difference this is a correction to the corruption and you do have customer support unlike fakebook that has nothing and i mean absolutely nothing um i've got an ad account with the other one but i can't even get into that and and i've had to take my my bank details um, away from the banking side I can't do it from from the fake book side because they won't let me in so um, <clears throat> beware of this guys if anyone contacts you saying they're me it's not please don't answer them please if you need to, to check get a hold of Collins Collins will send me a message um, or red even red even Red in his busy schedule will get a hold of me as well. Uh, but I want to cover the security because at the end of the day, I believe that the security that we've got within on passive is going to be second to none uh, when we reopen. So, Red, your thoughts, your next point um, as well, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm just going to pick up actually on uh, ONET, uh, which you, you were talking about. And, and when uh, I was asked to uh, submit my choice for uh the products and by the way um if you haven't done it yet don't do any more we've got hundreds of you that have already sent it in we've got enough information and data now guys so uh don't send any more in okay for those who already have fantastic uh they've all been forwarded but don't put any more in now guys i've just had a message um why do i think onet is going to be a fundamental and important part of on passive uh why traffic guys traffic we with within the ecosystem and within uh on passive itself um onet is going to be free okay which is already on its own don't forget the onet that we see now is not the finished version it's not what it's going to be you know we know that this is going to be worked on the same as omail is going to be worked on and it's going to be of the same standard as oconnect is so we know it is going to be a good product. Now, we know that millions upon millions of people have social media accounts across the whole swathe of all of them. You know, you, we don't have to single out any individual uh, social media platform, but there's millions of people on all of them. Now, even if we just got 10% uh, of the social media uh, users coming across, that's gonna give us maybe in the region of 20 to 30 million people that would come to ONET as a free user. That is 20 to 30 million people who are not only potential customers, but also potential buyers of any of our products and services. Uh, either through e-commerce or through our products, we are there. This instantly gives us organic traffic that is verified real people because 
to be in the ecosystem, you have to be verified so that we know every single one of these people is a real person. That is big, big data, guys, for so many, so many companies. And it's ours. We're not selling that data. We're not uh, in the marketplace for sharing it with anyone. It's our own data. And what's that going to do on the flip side? Any single business or out there at the moment, advertise online through Google, through Facebook, through YouTube, through uh, LinkedIn and through uh, Instagram and many, many others. They, they do advertise all over the place. Why? Because they're looking to make sales. Where do customers look or where do businesses look to advertise? Where the people are. Couple this with being able to advertise in a very secure place where there is real people, no fake accounts, and you can make a little bit of money for your business as well just by advertising in that area. This is going to be a huge game changer as far as how people look at advertising on the internet. And once we get the volume of users within the ecosystem, which will happen, then companies are going to approach on Passive and saying, can I advertise with you guys? Remember back a year, maybe two years ago, and our CEO said that you'll have a little button on your own websites that obviously will come through O Domain and that service as well, where you'll be able to click a box and guess what? Companies will have be able to put an advert on your web page and you will get a small piece of that revenue for having that advert on your web page. Also, they will obviously be able to advertise in other places within the ecosystem as well. But just having that alone is making your own organic, verified traffic under your own roof. No other company has ever done that. Even if you take Google uh, or YouTube, they use other people for the advert. For the advert. So in my case, uh, as a YouTuber, they place adverts on my YouTube prior to my lives or halfway through or whatever it may be. And YouTube don't pay me. It's the advertisers who pay YouTube that I get a percentage of. But the majority of that goes to YouTube. They get the higher percentage, regardless of whether any sale has been happened or not. Bring in another one of our products, Otracker, guess what the companies will be able to do, which they already do now. When I was researching about products, I looked at O-Tracker to see how much that uh, market is uh, worth on its own. And it's staggering, guys. And I, I was shocked, really was shocked in all honesty to how much it is worth. The um, Let me just find it for you how much it is worth on its own and i can tell you now it is huge i was so shocked o tracker at the moment in 2022 the analytical data market size was 41.05 billion dollars in 2022 now that is now going to be rising okay to 51.5 billion in 2023 and by between 23 and 30 it's going to rise by 34.68 percent those are crazy numbers you know just imagine if we had 10 percent of that market 10 percent of 57 billion not to be sniffed at is it all because of analytics and most people go, well, what do I want to know that for? Most people are saying, I don't need to use that. I'm never going to use it. But if you're not a company and you're advertising on the internet, guess what? You're dead in the water if you don't take advantage of analytical data. You are 
literally urinating in the wind is the nicest way that I can say it because you have zero idea of where your money is going and how much of a return you are getting on the adverts you are doing. You need to have as much information as you possibly can. The age demographics, where the people are from, how long they're on the page for, what are the keywords they are typing in to find your page, hotspots on your page to know what they're where they're navigating around. All of this information and a lot, lot more, by the way, that O-Tracker is going to give is so, so important to companies because it enables them to fine tune their adverts to make sure that they get the most value for money and return ROI on that advert that they're doing. This is why they spend so much money, not only on the advert, but also on analytical data right now. We're in that market, guys. We have a product that is going to rival what is out there at the moment. Google, An Google Analytics is probably the number one. We've got a product that is going to rival that one and couple all that with the, the organic traffic that we're going to have within the ecosystem because of the volume of people that are going to be in there and customers wanting to come to advertise with us. And then in return, they're going to get very good analytics back from the adverts that have already put in there, which is then in turn going to make them want to advertise more. Putting, uh, putting more adverts within the ecosystem and also other companies seeing the returns that these people are going and wanting to come in as well. It's just going to be crazy and game over. And this is what we are all working towards. And this is why today I said, are you prepared? Are you prepared for what is going to happen? And when we own, when we've got a COO, Mohammed Kamal, telling us we only know 10% or 2% of what is gonna be happening. This blows my mind, literally does blow my mind because even with that bit that I know and talking the way I'm talking now, it is crazy, crazy, crazy. And the best of it all, we're part of it. We've seen this grow through the journey. How many other people can say that? Not a lot. That's for sure. We are going to have people in the future coming to us and saying, you're part of that on passive thing, aren't you? And you're going to say, yeah, I've been with them for however long it is. And they're going to want to know your story. And we all individually have a on passive story to tell. Anyway, I'll leave it at that and back to you. Thanks. Thanks, Fred. I must admit, I've got the uh, the ideal car, and the and the sticker on the side is going to go on passive. Got me this, <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait for that. Collins, I'm sure you've got something to add to what Red's just said, so please take it away. Oh, right, thank you. I just need to read, but I was removing all those recalcitrant that always try to, you know, penetrate our free space. You know, sometimes we don't come to your space, don't come to our space if you don't have anything to offer. You know, like today on Madi show, I said, if you don't have anything to offer, please just shut up. If you have something good idea, bring it with one recommendation. We want, if you come and tell me I'm not good enough, show me why I'm not good enough. Tell me why I'm not good enough. I want to learn and I want to improve myself. But if you cannot tell me, please shut up. Just stay where you are. I'm not coming to your site. Don't infiltrate my space. So those people, I took them off. And I just want to educate them for those who are still here listening. If you look at unpassive, don't look at unpassive. Drill down. Don't say unpassive is not good enough. What is not good enough? Tell me. When we use, we start, they, they started um, say, let's look at Facebook. None of us were there when they started building Facebook, but we jumped on it because it was social media application. We never look at the downside, but we we're just there. How much were we getting on Facebook? Nothing. We were there happy. We use it, using it. We jumped on WhatsApp. We never saw anything. It was just like, can you call somebody? Yes. We never went and looked at the details. How much were we getting? Nothing. They sold our data. They make a lot of money. This is the truth. If you want to take it, yes, you refuse. Fine. 
free, nothing free. There is nothing free. Most of those companies come, they say, oh, it's free, it's free. Do you know what they do with your data? Nothing. You don't even know. You go along, you look at all of those, even Zoom, I will call them. Zoom started with how many? Not one or two, three, use, three people can sit on a Zoom. They grow up, 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 and get more people to come because they build from scratch and they, they need to test it. You join a company, a startup company, doing something different, building, and those who don't even have any clue about how they are building software start to castigate it. That is what will really pain me because you are not in the software industry. Just shut up your mouth because you have never built a software before. Mr. Ashbufara is building something that is huge. And you come to sit quiet and learn. You come and you castigate. Sometimes I, I really doubt your, even your own integrity for those who come on and they, they castigate it. We are using old, we are using O Connect today. None of you that are castigating have ever seen on O Connect. Even they put anything good before you, you will still reject it. We started from nothing. We saw O Connect, we saw O Mail, we saw you know O Trim. And we still said, you know what? It is not good enough. Show me what you have built, and I will follow you. Don't tell me what somebody has built. Show me what you have built yourself. I will follow you. Ms. Angra is putting all this every day in front of us. So I ask myself, those who are castigating, even if they put gold and silver before you, you will still reject it. So you, you, you don't have any place. You don't have any moral standing to castigate somebody who is doing this. No moral standing. And sometimes you come with fake name. Red is here with his real name and his face. Andy is here with his real name and his face. I'm here with my real name and my face. You come and put your real name on your face and castigate. Some of you hide, hide under fake name and you castigate. Shame on you. Shame on you. I'll say shame on you. So, Red, I just want to leave it there because sometimes these people make me, it's just, I just go mad because they don't even know what they are saying. So, I'll leave it there, Andy. <laughs> I, I, listen, Collins, I, I'm with you. <clears throat> I must admit, yeah, we put up our, our faces in front of the camera and most of us like me have got a face for radio but um <laughs> but there you go um yeah, I've, I, got, uh, I've got thick, thick skin to it all now I'd... yeah I, I, it's not something that that concerns me in the slightest i have to say and no, um, i'm with you on that one red uh, but you're right at the end of the day i cannot wait for onet to 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 set up um uh, like you say we've got various aspects and various things in there that is going to boost us and if you think about it people if you've got um a thousand friends on on the other one and um you know you move those thousand friends across to one passive simply by sharing an idea um and i think it was ivy isn't it in the states who's who's set up a club and she's moved all these people across which is fantastic by the way but but um <clears throat> you know we move it across to to own it and then these other people are going to start to see the ecosystem and they become customers so you are going to have a customer base just by introducing own it at some point in the future i have no doubt of that so this is great red i'm sure you had something yeah. else to uh, to add on <laughs> I've always got something to add on. Uh, David <laughs> yeah. Kosowski, by the way, uh, has just reached out to me, Andy, and said that apparently you're asking for the code on an email sent to him. So now he knows. Now he knows. Thank yes, absolutely. His attention anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Security guys. Uh, it's uh, if I had same today of somebody saying, how are you? Can we chat? And I, I know this person very well. And it's not terminologies that that person would use. And so I went, delete. Anyway, guys, I think what we're trying to say here really uh, about what's going on at the moment is that there certainly is things moving behind the scenes. Uh, that's for sure. You only had to, to look at our CEO over the weekend and Mohammed Kamal over the weekend. Uh, by the way, did anyone else notice that Mohammed Kamal's lost a bit of weight, by the way? I did, anyway. He's looking really trim and good at the moment. But um, both of them looked extremely relaxed. Now, when you've got people who have the full picture of what is going on, coming on, 
and talking in the way that they were talking in this very relaxed manner knowing what they know then that certainly should give us an awful lot of confidence as well it gives me a lot of confidence um because personal mannerisms regardless of how hard you might try to hide them uh they give you away a lot of the time and these are uncontrolled things that many people uh, do without themselves even knowing they're doing it but astute people can pick up on it these two guys very relaxed chilling out talking openly and very much from the heart Mohammed Kamal was extremely open about what he was talking about he was actually saying there's obviously things I can't talk about which is fair enough but uh, in between what he could talk I thought he was extremely open and honest uh, with what he was saying this fills me with an awful lot of confidence for what is happening and I said before the migration period how long it's going to take I have no idea whatsoever but one thing's for sure is when we have a movement of people as we have right now within on passive and kind of what we're doing now really is keeping our group together you know uh, helping each other to bide our time for the migration to happen we are certainly going to reap the rewards of our patience of our belief in this company couple that with knowing that we have a ceo who is doing all this not for himself not for his business but for the benefit of all us the early adopters the affiliates and the users then you know you're in the right place and for the sake of waiting does it make any difference go about your lives he said carry on doing what you're normally doing until we start once we started then you can do something else but until that time happens go about your normal day and your normal life i certainly do obviously on passive is my life so i spend an awful lot of time on it but that's my choice and as long as you check in in some area once a day to make sure you're up to date whether it's a live whether it is a webinar or whatever it may be and obviously when the site comes back on then you can check into your o founders back office and your ecosystem you're going to be up to date that is all you will need to do but one thing's for sure is it's going to be an extremely sweet ending to this journey and that i believe is going to be worth every ounce of resilience belief waiting time and all the rest of it that all of us have put in back to you excellent thank you red you're quite right at the end of the day we we've we've um some of us have waited i mean you you've obviously waited a considerable length of time in comparison but but the beauty of it is that um uh, this one percent that we do know um uh, like you said earlier is extremely exciting now once we get to hear the even 20 percent of what's going on in the background you go wow fantastic collins any final comments that you'd like to make just follow right you know the only thing that like Ray said is believe you know don't follow all the distractors just believe in what mr Agfai is doing and what he's saying we have come really really far you know like red they started 2018 they saw nothing they believe and see red is still fired up from the day he joined it's still like the same and even more fired up because he believed do you think red will waste his time six years of his time just to believe in to stay in something that he doesn't believe in it will never happen he is not an idiot like those who always said you you uh, um, <laughs> 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 you know there are people who are really in need you know they really believe they know this is really true if you can believe from the day you joined when there was nothing no website nothing just a word 
and you see the company growing from strength to strength and you are still in there, it means there is something in it, you know. So all of us just, you know, we just have to believe, trust in the process, trust in what Ms. Alvra is doing because he himself, he knows that what he is doing, what, what he is doing will change mankind, not only to the 1.4 million founders or affiliate, but he wants to change the world. Remember in OP360, he said, he said, yes, during the independence, he talked about America, but he said, no, it's not only within America, but he wants to change the, the 8 billion people out there. If they choose to, to come into unpassive, they will see something. So what we are doing, Red is here, you know, my, my brother Andy is here. What we are doing, we are just sharing. Are we doing something serious? No. Are we really building the software? No. Are we taking the pain, the pressure? No. We are just telling every affiliate or those who will listen, this is something good and it's being done for you. You know, you don't need to replicate what Red is doing. If you come in and Red said, you know what, push that button, it is all done for you. That is it. You know, you don't need to market. You don't need to do anything. What Red is doing, you can do it. There is no company in this world where you can replicate what somebody is doing. But this is the only company where you can replicate, where Red can tell you, I've done A, B, C, just do exactly what I've told you and you'll be fine. It is so easy, so simple, simple as that. But when you look at it and you doubt, and the moment you start to create doubt in yourself, that is the day you failed. But when you believe in something so much, like the way Red did, those who came in in 2018, they just believe in what Mr. Ashmufara told them without even seeing where the company is going to. He said, come in and I'll take you to the top. They all believe in it. They believe in his dream and his vision and what he wants to achieve. And they look at it now. Red is telling you, it's not about me anymore. It's about the whole world. Red is doing it not for himself again. Every time when he do his life, it's not about Red because Red can sit quiet and still hammer that side and make the most out of it. They said, how can I help as many people as possible? Because this is too good to sit in my little place, in my comfort zone and make the most and others are suffering. So what we are doing here is about bringing the light to the world to say, you know what? This is really good. Take a look and just close your ear on all those distractors because they, are, they mean no good to you. They want to suck into something that is not meaningful. You know, ask them what they have been doing. It, there is no meaning. If they don't bring you in, they will not make anything. So they are going like vampires just to see how they can suck people into in some, something that will not even make any difference in your life. They stick with on passive. Look at it. It is free. If you come in and it's not for you, you know, you, you are not tied to anything. They don't ask you any credit, no bank account, nothing. You can say this is not for me. And then you go. But we are telling you, what if you choose not to be in? You will regret the rest of your life because this opportunity is a lifetime opportunity and you will never see it again. It will never happen again in our generation and even the generation to come. Nobody will open an IT company, bring you in. If the person believes he will be the world richest man. Now riches compete with riches. Elon Musk wants to be the world richest man and he wants to maintain that statue. So if somebody is coming, he needs to up his game to maintain that statue. But who will come in and said, I want to build somebody, something, not for my own riches. I want everybody to be happy. It will never happen again. Where well, I don't need that much. I just want everybody to get something to keep, take care of his family, his environment, mm -hmm. and those around him. You will never see it again because now it's about competition of, of riches. So that's where I'll leave it. If you want to listen, it's up to you. If you want to listen, it's up to you. Thanks, Collins. Uh, I think the best analogy I've heard came from Chris, actually. Uh, Chris has obviously been in the automotive industry for, for many, many years before taking retirement. But um, uh, when you buy a new car, you take it for a test drive. So take on passive for a test drive. Try it out. It's not going to cost you anything to do that you get to have a look behind the curtain and see what's going on. And believe me, <clears throat> there will be a limitation to the number of affiliates and affiliate positions. But 
bear in mind today there's over five and a half, maybe six odd billion potential customers because every single person that uses the internet is a potential customer. And if they decide to close that affiliate situation at 10 million or 50 million, there's a still an awful lot of potential to be able to have an income to the size that you want because it's not just 6 billion customers. It's 6 billion customers for one product and it's another 6 billion customers for the next product and the next product and the next product, whether it's a digital product or a, or a hard hardware product, doesn't matter. You've got 6 billion potential customers. So if you've got a thousand customers and 500 of those customers have bought three products that are monthly paying, you've got three lots of commission coming in from the same customer. It moves the market from 6 billion to 18 billion. Now think about that one for a look. Anyway, thank you very much indeed. Red, have you got any final comments before we go? No, you're all good. Right. Thank you. I think I've talked, talked. You've talked, talked. <laughs> Excellent. They're not a good internet provider either, by the way, but there you go. Right. Thank you guys for uh, for joining today. And um, we look forward to seeing you again next uh, next Tuesday. If you have any comments, oh, and do please pass on the information regarding my hacked account. Make sure everybody knows. Do not, under any circumstances, pass that, that uh, code to anybody. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you again soon.